Hello and welcome back to Vermont Craft Tours. I'm Sarah Skelly. Today I wanted to talk about the third leg of the tripod of my own um, fiber arts practice, and that's dyeing yarn. So I'm a knitter, I'm a spinner, and I'm also a dyer. And again, this was an offshoot of raising sheep. We had a number of white sheep on the farm, and I found that the white yarn was not selling as readily as a lot of the natural colored yarn was. So I thought, well, what do people do? They dye this. Um, and I was initially interested in natural dyeing for the um, eco-consciousness of it, and also just curiosity. It, it seemed magical to me that you could get all these different colors from plants, uh, many of them hidden colors. You know, it's not the color that the plant is, it's some other color. Um, avocados are that way. For example, you can get, you know, pinks and things out of avocado pits, which um, doesn't seem like that would be the case. So we uh, started natural dyeing, started out with some kits and reading a lot of uh, sort of recipes and tips online. And it seemed to me everything was very kind of wishy-washy and like, oh, you could do this or you could add a little of that, you know, make it up as you go along. Um, and that wasn't really very helpful to me. I, especially when I'm learning a new skill, I like very specific instructions, do this, wait five minutes, stir this, this many times, add this much of that, you know. Um, and I wasn't getting great colors necessarily. Some colors were coming out really nicely. Other colors were coming out um, kind of a dingy brown. And so I was getting a bit frustrated when my mother found out about a workshop that had been um, scheduled at a local farm here. And it was about natural dyeing. And it was taught by Rebecca Burgess. Now, she's from California, um, but she came all the way out here to Vermont to teach this natural dye class. And she's really an expert in um, raising and using indigo and um, other natural dyes. And she also runs Fiber Shed, which is a big part of the slow textile movement in this country. Um, and talking about sourcing materials and growing materials for textiles, including growing dye plants in a way um, that's eco-friendly and provides carbon uh, sequestration. So all of that was very interesting, you know, her, her work, and then actually learning how to die. So we came for, it was a two-day workshop, and um, we talked a lot about the slow textile movement, and I'll link to her, her site in the show notes so you can read more about that. And then when it got down to the dye day, it was great because we had all these raw materials that had either been prepared ahead of time or that we got to harvest on the farm where we were dying. So it showed me that even in a cold climate, there's a lot of items out there, um, whether wild growing or things that you can cultivate to make natural dye. Um, and, you know, at each stage through the process, she goes, well, first you do this to the yarn. And I'm going, wow, I, I wasn't doing that. And okay, and then you're gonna mordant it like this and use these steps to do the mordant, um, which prepares the yarn for being dyed. Okay, well, I wasn't doing those steps that way. Um, okay, now you're gonna treat the yarn like this when it's in the dye pot. Ooh, okay, well, I wasn't doing that. And so along each step of the process, I was learning so much, making furious notes in my notebook. Um, and, you know, got some great results, got to take home a little sample book um, with with all the different yarns that we had dyed and you know what colors came from which plant sources um, and it was just a good boon to you know my sense that this could be something that I could get better at and improve um, and lo and behold um, later that year uh, we started picking things and dyeing ourselves my mother and I uh, here on the farm and this is one example it's um, a commercial sock yarn and it's dyed with jewelweed. Um, jewelweed grows wild around here. It grows rampantly in wet places and it's very easy to harvest and work with. Um, and I'll put up my, my tips for dyeing with jewelweed and my exact process for doing this um, in a future episode. But, you know, that was a great encouragement. We, we did some multicolored um, sock yarn and some other things, practiced with indigo a little bit. Um, so that was a great way to get going. 
Now, from there, I realized that a lot of natural dye processes um, are very labor intensive. Um, and so I got interested in other kinds of commercial dyes, um, but get, again, looking at an eco friendly side of it. And we found this company called Greener Shades that makes a dye that doesn't have any heavy metals in it. Um, and the dye can be used on organically certified yarn. So, um, so we, we do dye some of our yarns that we sell with this Greener Shades product um, because it's a much faster and more efficient dye process. Um, it doesn't take all day to do one color of yarn. Um, so I encourage you to, to look out for um, a good book. Um, Rebecca Burgess also does have a book on natural dyeing, and there's a couple of other good ones I'll link to in the show notes. Um, or go take a class with someone uh, who has a lot of experience in teaching, and um, we'll, we'll be offering classes like these on our fiber tours. Um, Jane Woodhouse uh, and Tammy White are two of the people that I'm hoping I can get to teach natural dyeing. They're both very experienced. Um, but even if you don't come on one of our tours, look in your area for natural dye workshops from people that have experience teaching it. Even if you don't take it up as a full-time hobby, as I have, um, just trying it out uh, can be a lot of fun and very satisfying. Thanks again for joining me today, and stay tuned for more episodes.